Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, John and uh, Mary Lou, uh, Maya, the extension specialist here, and uh, Benema. We're lucky to be here to talk to you because it's nice to uh, actually can be involved in you know some of the issues that are involved with the avocado industry. Obviously, um, I'm involved with production agriculture. And I, I I hear that some of the strategies that might help the avocado industry is to um, help in production and increase yields. And so this is where we're coming from. Um, I'm a research professor at the university. And so we look at it back and try to come up with new strategies. We see that phosphites were introduced in ritamil, the metal, the uh, methanoxin, and ritamil gold and uh, metal axle. These were introduced in the 1980s. And so we were very much interested in, um, as new materials came up, Came about to try to see if we can get these. So these were our ideas to try to get these registered and help the growers, not just the avocado growers, but the citrus growers, the almond growers. And so this was how this came about. So the title here is oxythylpiprolin and beyond. And so we, we have planned more than just this one new fungicide. But this is, we started with this one because it's such a remarkable fungicide. So we're trying to improve the management of phytophthora root rot of avocado with new highly effective fungicides. And this is the first of a series that will be introduced. <clears throat> oh, there we go. A little slow on that, but... Uh, uh, So a phytophthora disease is avocado. Benema just uh, gave you a big overview. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on, on this, but uh, as she pointed out, Cinerome causes root rot. Uh, we can see the evidence of dieback, uh, dieback of the branches. And, and a lot of growers actually think that when they see the tree stress, they wanna remove, remove that stress so they go to watering. And so watering is actually just what Benema said, the worst thing you can do to try to overcome this uh, issue. She also mentioned that the, the Phytophthora mangii, uh, this was uh, a professor named after the professor that spent most of his life working on Phytophthora and avocados. And many of you know John, uh, he retired a few years ago and uh, they recognized him as a, uh, with the renaming of a, a subgroup of Phytophthora citricola. So Fedema covered the disease cycle. We, we're dealing with an organism that can survive in soil, survives very well with, as, as Fedema described. And, and when it, all these structures like cometospores or mycelium or ovospores, when they start producing and growing, they'll produce these sporangia. And the sporangia are like uh, time bombs because they have lots of propagules. You might get 20 or 30 zoospores from a single uh, sporangium, so it can it can reproduce very quickly and produce lots of inoculum. Water is the key uh, component for uh, initializing the growth of these. These things swim through the water; they're motile, they're attracted to the root surface, and they germinate as that little red uh, dot there shows uh, with a germ tube and infect the root tissue. And it starts this uh, cycle, and it's, it follows that as you irrigate your trees. So the disease is most severe in poorly drained soils. Um, I think I also covered some of this, but the disease is optimal at 24, uh, 75 degrees, which is ideal San Diego uh, temperature, and uh, it, but it can grow from a range of 55 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So Fedem also covered some of the quickly here, just some of the prevention mechanisms. We have certified disease free stock plant, tolerant rootstocks, irrigate carefully, uh, mulch around the tree, especially around the up to the drip line, as illustrated uh, in, in the previous talk, and then plant trees on berms and uh, don't, you know, water and soil movement can spread the diseases as well. So as I mentioned, since the 1980s, we have, we've had phosphite and methanoxin 
And many of the nurseries used methanoxin extensively, they had more resistance develop. And with phosphites, uh, many of the growers used this and they were told that there would never be phosphite resistance. And uh, that's kind of a, a true statement. It's very resilient to resistance. But what we see though, is that with any chemical or any fungicide, if we use that one material exclusively, we're gonna get resistance showing. So I'm not trying to scare people, but this is what's happening. What we do in biology is we collect isolates and these are uh, populations of Phytophthora cinnamomi collected around California. And what we see are these uh, bimodal curves and we don't like to see them. We like to see just this one uh, curve, normalized curve of, on the left here, that's the sensitive population. And you see that the organism is sensitive at 17 to 21, maybe 24 parts per million of, of phosphite. But then with our surveys, we found that the organism is shifting. And this is because, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to do a scare tactic, but not all the population is shifting to resistant, but some of it is. But if we continue to use one material, that, that shift will continue. And so this is what we're trying to do by introducing new materials that we, that we preach about. We need to rotate in different modes of action so that this shift doesn't continue. We wanna keep phosphite around because as, as an important mode of action. So the way to do that is to introduce new materials. So as I said, we had previously registered metalaxo, which is was vitamil, then methanoxin, which was vitamil gold. This represented frac group four, which just means it's a different mode of action from the phosphonates, which was phosphatyl all initially, then it was phosphorus acid. And again, it's sold as a pesticide on, on products like uh, fungify or profite. Uh, these types of materials are phosphonate materials that are uh, registered for pesticide use. Now other companies, as we know, mix them with phosphates and we have Nutrify and these other companies that also have PO3 in it, but they also have the nutritional value of PO4, which is the phosphate that feeds the tree. So some companies go that direction with uh, using the fertilizer as a, as a mixture with the phosphates to give us those materials. So in 2021, this oxytylpiprolin became registered in California. And you see right away, it's known as Arondis. I say Arondis, some people say it a little bit differently, but Arondis, and it, you notice right away, it's a group 49. So that means it's a brand new, different mode of action uh, from the previous registered materials. And as I said, what we're doing is we're trying to introduce three other modes of action. And this goal here, is to develop a rotation program so that we could sus sustain productivity without loss of efficacy of those materials. So I have to, most of the companies, this is a avocado, it's a specialized uh, commodity. It's not corn, it's not wheat, and it's not rice, so it doesn't have millions and millions of acres. So we have to go to a registration process known as the IR4 program or IR4 project. And that's basically a federally assisted program where if it gets nominated by someone like me, it then gets approved and the federal tax, the taxpayers pay for the registration of that material on avocados. So that's how that works. The problem is, is you nominate that these projects and they have to go through uh, GLP studies, which is good laboratory practice. Everything has to be documented. It's a third party essentially registration we have to get permission from the registrar, in this case, or the Arondis, it was Syngenta. And so with these other companies here, we have to get their approval. And you see why we, we picked these, they have 22, 43, and 40. Those are again, different modes of action of these brand new uh, phytophthora fighting fungicides. Now, this is just a way that researchers look at the activity of uh, a fungicide. And we look at potassium phosphite and the range of EC50, I just showed you the, the bimodal curve. We see that it goes from 12 to 361. 
So that shows that there's something happening. There's been a shift in sensitivity of, of uh, potassium phosphate to in, in the organism by top of the same moment. Methanoxum, again, uh, 0.03 to 0.13. When you start getting close to one, it, it doesn't work that well. Uh, and so right now the isolates that we collected are sensitive. Here's the other isolates, fluoropicolide, ethyboxin, and propylide. And we express this in EC50 values. Uh, and basically that means that the concentration that will reduce 50% of the growth of the organism. So when you can see they're very small numbers, they're 0 0.023, 0 0.046, 0.017 parts per million, which is very good. When we look at mandipropamide, it's down at 0.003. Now we're at three parts per billion. But then we look at oxythiopyr. And it's 0 0.0002. So that's 0 0.2 parts per billion. So it, it represents a brand new uh, level of activity. And I've been testing fungicides for many, many years. And this is the most active material we ever evaluated. So I wrote that on the side. It has the lowest EC50 in fractions of parts per billion with a, a, a mean value against phytophthorus in only at 0. 0.0004, which is four tenths of a part per billion inhibiting the growth. So it has this high intrinsic activity. And what that means is that we can use really low rates and, and get very good results. So it becomes very affordable for growers to use this. And it's, it, it's not as cheap as, gonna, as phosphite materials, but it's close to that. So that's what we're indicating. So the Arondis label looks like this, and uh, you'll see it has a group 49, that's the FRAC code, just to make sure that information is, gets into the grower's hands. The rate is 4.8 and 9.6 fluid ounces per acre, and the 4.8 fluid ounces, we'll see some results with that. We think that's a, a, a very effective rate. Uh, obviously, if there's really high disease and you need to clean it up, Syngenta so wanted to go to higher rates, but the 4.6 uh, ounce rate works really well. The nice thing about it, it can be applied through the uh, drip irrigation, so it's chemigated, and there's no need to spray it on the, on the tree. So that's a very affordable way to apply it. And we're gonna see that, I'm gonna show you some evidence that it's taken up by the roots and it's translocated acropetally through the stem up into the tree, which will give us our protection for the cankers. Uh, canker diseases as well. Syngenta has this uh, explanation for resets of new plantings, one application at planting, and 30 days later with root growth. So the key timing for managing uh, root diseases is at this, these root growth flushes. And in most tree crops, that's the spring and the fall. So this is what we're talking about, developing programs where we could put this on in the spring and then these materials like around this go get uptake through the root system into the tree and they last there for several months. And so this gives you your protection for over the, if you do it in the spring, it's gonna protect over the summer. You do it in the fall, it does it, protects into the winter. So that, that's the uh, strategy. They wanna have two sequential applications per year. Uh, obviously we wanna develop rotation programs and if what we're ideally what we're shooting for is to get one application of each mode of action when they become available so that we can rotate over a two year period between multiple modes of action. It has a restricted entry of four hours, so it's pretty, pretty safe. And the pre-harvest interval is uh, just a day. Okay, so currently registered is Rebus. Rebus is registered for citrus nurseries and we were able to register it as a foliar treatment for Phytophthora a brown rot of the fruit. Uh, it's pending registration on, uh, for nursery use in all tree crops. So the idea is that the nurseries now can use Revis, a brand new mode of action. There's no known resistance to it. And then the, if you talk to the nursery, they use that. And then when you go to plant the tree, you use the Arondis. So automatically you're not overusing, you can rotate between the different modes of action. So that's Rebus, and you see it's a different mode of action. It's group 40, 
and that means it's mainly probamide, and that's the uh, fungicide specific active ingredient. The two other materials are from Valent. This is Valent USA. They have uh, agreements uh, with Bayer. They sell this Presidio, which is glucopicolide. It's currently registered on citrus as a soil treatment, and we're registering it through IR4, as I mentioned, for, for the avocado industry. And then this other material, at the boxum, it's a group 22, is currently registered on vegetable crops. And why I'm mentioning this is that these other crops are really fairly safe materials because they're spraying these at both a foliar and brown treatment. So, you know, they're, they can be uh, consumed by consumers after washing and cleaning them and they're very, very safe materials. Okay, let's just look at a couple of uh, quick studies that we did on potted inoculated plants. Then we went into commercial orchards with some growers right here in the Temecula and Fallbrook area. So it's kind of remarkable when you look at these kinds of slides and I always, even I'm stunned by some of the results. Uh, you look at those pictures there, here's the control. These are inoculated greenhouse plants. And you can see how the root pruning, the feeder roots were removed on the control, meaning that was untreated and we just put the phytophthora there. And then when we harvested it, we dug up the plants and you see the roots are uh, essentially smaller, there's less branching. Here's PO3, you see there's more roots. Well, look at the oxythylcryptin. It's just extraordinary that the amount of root growth. So this is a, a remarkable fungicide that we use works at very low uh, levels. We see, we've made comparisons here. All the fungicides are working very good. We look at root rot incidence. So we actually collect a lot of the roots and we see how many, how much Phytophthora is isolated from that. So then we can see the around this has the lowest root rot infection. And, and we also count the soil. And what that means is we look at the soil to see how much propagules are in there. And if you have a lot of root rot, there's a lot more propagules being put back into the soil. That's how this disease cycle works. And so if we stop the fungus, it puts less inoculum back in the soil. And so when the next time you treat, we will have a reduction in uh, population and we'll have a reduction in disease. So we did some more greenhouse studies. And again, to il illustrate, we used DUSA, which is a tolerant rootstock. And we compared it to this number uh, variety PS54, which is very susceptible. You can see on the side over there, it says Phytophthora root rot incidence on the bottom. The controls are really high. 75% of the root system on the top graph is infected. And same with the bottom one on the susceptible, we had 75% infected. When we use these fungicides in combination with the tolerant one, all the fungicides look spectacular. I mean, they really reduced the disease on that DUSA uh, variety. And oxythylpiplin is near zero, which is really a, an amazing feat. And even on the susceptible host, they're doing quite well. Uh, at the box, it was maybe a little bit harder, uh, didn't perform as well, but it is significantly different from the untreated control. Dual picolide and copolymide, methanoxin are all doing well, but oxythylpicolin was exceptional again in this uh, system. And again, look at the, the root systems, those white feeder roots, you know, comparing DUSA versus the control, really spectacular differences. Now, this was done in a, uh, Riverside and San Diego County uh, with some of the cooperators that we had. Uh, this was done a few years ago from 2018 to 2019. As we were developing this material, we used DUSA and plot one and Duke uh, for root rootstock in plot two. And what we're seeing here is a reduction in disease incidence on those roots. And you can see the reduction occurred here with Arondis Ultra, which is a mixture of Arondis with Revis. Uh, Revis by itself, Arondis, and then Profite, they all reduce the disease on, on the DUSA rootstock they all reduce the disease on root except the phosphite. So we went back and looked at the phosphite uh, isolates that we collected from there. And sure enough, those were resistant to the phosphite in the commercial orchard. So the phosphite wasn't really paying itself because 
in that particular orchard, uh, we had resistant isolates. So this was done in last, last spring. We had another cooperator up here, just uh, uh, north of here in um, Temecula. And what we're showing here, we tried to go in, we collected the root rock samples and we compared treated versus uh, I went to reduction. Again, this is a reduction in root rot incidence. And Arondis was performing very well. Arondis with uh, Rhythmio Gold and Alumin all did really well. That was in that uh, study, giving us uh, a reduction in root rot, somewhere between 40 and 80% reductions. So this represents that all these fungicides with just one application, these are young trees, young orchard, and even you can see the results even in one year. <laughs> Okay, one of the big things we found, uh, we're doing work on other crops. I mentioned we're registering on almonds and cherries and other crops. Just quickly here, the field study we did with uh, almond rootstocks. And, you know, sometimes you do, you make mistakes. And we went out and put the chemical out. And then we told the guy, the, the irrigation manager, go turn the water on. Well, he got busy doing something else. And the water didn't come on for about six hours later. Well, what happened was, we said, well, the results were, were very poor. And then we said, well, what happened? So we set up an experiment to look at around this applied to dry soil versus around this applied to wet soil. And what we can easily see is that if you apply around this to wet soil, it binds to the soil and then it, it, it doesn't get down into the root zone, even if you water it six hours later, it, it sticks to that soil. So what the application is, is that uh, you have to apply it to wet soil. So on the label, back to that label I was showing you, the perfect time to put the Arondis on is at the end of an irrigation cycle, where you have about six hours left, you can then put it on and, and, and use that water to push it down into the root zone. It's all wet soil, and then the roots will take it up. And so that's the, the message. You want to always apply it to wet soil, and you want to water it in to get it into the root zone to get the maximum performance of the fungicide. I know I'm going a little bit long here, but again, we did studies. These are some uh, studies to show the systemic action. We measured this with bioassays and we measured it with uh, analytical techniques like high pressure chromatography, where we could extract the material. And basically, we're showing uh, around this here on the left with parts per million, it goes into the roots. You see the bar going up and it goes into the stems it's where it's transitory going through the stems, that's the blue bars and it ends up in the leaves. And these are small little potted plants. So um, again, uh, we're showing that it is moving from the soil through the roots, stem and up into the leaves. Methanoxin does the same thing, but you know, it's the scale here. The, we're using a lot more methanoxin in these uh, potted plant studies because as we size it based on the label, we're using very little oxyphalopiprolin. And that's, that's accumulating in the roots at 0.4 to 1.2 parts per million. And we're talking about something that inhibits the fungus at 0.4 parts per billion. So this is over a hundred times more concentrated in those tissues to prevent Phytophthora from growing. Lastly, we did some studies here again on almond and cherry. We treat the soil and then we wait a couple of weeks and then we inoculate the stems. Here's what happens to a the inoculated stem with Phytophthora. We can see all that brown discoloration. Then where we treated it with Arondis, again, where we made a very severe injury, I put a plug in there of Phytophthora, it didn't move out of that. So that shows us visually that the Phytophthora is inhibited and it's in that chemical is in the stem as it moved up. And these are just from soil uh, applications. So it should work for uh, both Phytophthora mangii and Phytophthora cinnamon. Okay, so the whole goal of these, I showed you these practices. The whole goal is to get less infection when you use certified disease-free nursery stock. You water properly, you're, you're uh, making sure the environment isn't conducive for multiple infections. Planting on berms, the water's gonna drain away faster. And again, that allows for a less conducive environment like 
uh, there are organic mulches, as Fatima said. There's lots of competition with that, but it also you also see root escape. Roots will grow up into that mulch. The phytophthora stays down in the soil. So this is another reason why to mulch. Prevent soil water movement, obviously. And again, uh, provide good tree nutrition. And, and that was covered as well. And then we have fungicides. And we always say we have to rotate, but if you only have phosphite or lefinoxin, you can't really rotate that uh, well. So this acronym was developed for uh, through my career, we say follow the rules. And the R stands for rotating between different modes of action. Phosphite, Arondis, they have different modes of action. The Presidio, aluminum are pending. They'll have different modes of action. And if we can get nurseries to use Rebus, we have a system now where we can have all different types of modes of action that can, can totally confuse Phytophthora and prevent the selection for resistance. Use labeled rates. Uh, never want to overuse these things that would select for resistance. Uh, limit the total number of sprays. And if this is on the label, you want to put no more than two, ideally one. Uh, Syngenta says no more than two, but I say ideally when we get all these four, we, we can go to one per year. Uh, educate yourself on the modes of action. I'm emphasizing these frac groups, and then I'm talking about potential mixtures. This is also a strategy. We're testing the Presidio aluminum mixtures right now. And so starting a, a program with a mixture of different modes of action might be the best strategy to prevent selection of resistance. So what I did is to show you the quick results here. So we started the nursery. We used Revis, uh, phosphites, and epinoxum. Those are registered. The grower and the nursery can tell you what he last treated. And then when you plant the tree, according to the Arondis label, you could put it in at, at reset, the Arondis, and then uh, 30 days later, a tree again with Arondis. And we can rotate, and the trees get a little bit older in the spring here, we can rotate into the, uh, during the summer or fall, another mode of action, or you could, technically you could use Arondis there as a, uh, no more than two applications per year. So I came up with these different uh, combinations of different programs. So the top one was what we just described around this uh, planting and uh, 30 days later, which is the spring. And then we have a uh, phosphite in the fall. In year two, we, we hope to have a lumen and then and then presidio, and that represents a four rotation program. Uh, program two, again, we're looking at mixtures with a lumen presidio, and we're testing that right now. And then with the program three here, we're looking at mixture rotations of different products. Okay, thank you very much. For, it's just, there's a lot of people involved. Uh, these were the growers, Nick Pinch, Matt Nelson, and Andrea and John Baxter that gave, loaned us their orchards to do some of this work. Um, we had uh, Patty Manislova was a collaborator on some of this research. And so she's uh, uh, doing a lot of the breeding work uh, at, avocado rootstocks. Uh, we have my lab team here. Uh, thanks to uh, Syngenta uh, Crop Protection, Valent USA, the IR4 program, Jerry Barron, the uh, director. And then we got funding to support this research through SCRI, which is a federal funding program, a grant that Patty uh, Silva spearheaded, the IR4 project, and agrochemical industries, which gave us the materials. Uh, I just really want to say, you know, as a team, we have to have support from the avocado industry as well. And so, you know, it's, you have, we put at the university, we put a lot of people together and, you know, we know that the industry is having a hard time with some issues. Uh, the grower, Andrea told me her water bill and I almost uh, fell off my chair when she told me her water bill last year. And uh, it's not a hundred dollars, it's, it's thousands of dollars. And you guys know that. So I, I hear your pain, you know, talking about the cost of water and the cost of electricity. Uh, something has to be done for growers and we uh, support growers. And so these are issues that are bigger than what my role is with the university, but we understand what you're going through. And we're, we're, we're saying though that if we had a little bit of help also from the industry, UCAC, 
you know, we can put teams together and there's a lot more work that can be done with these new fungicides and mites and usage. And so I'm making a little bit of a plug here, but uh, the industry has to recognize that nothing's free. And we, we are doing our best to use federal money uh, through IR4, through these grants, and trying to get the chemical companies to supply us with uh, tools as well. So thank you very much.